Hello everyone, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Today is the day of the festival. Oh my god. So we've done everything we can to try and keep Sayori alive. Let's see if everything we've done plays out the way we want. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking with, to school with Sayori. Oh no. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. Oh shit. Did we fail already? I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond, thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Wow. There's no mention of Yuri at all, but there's also Sayori who's not picking up. This is what happened last time. June, you're the first one here. Uh, you. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones they prepare that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Oh shit, is this different? I can't remember, is this actually different? Yeah, she overslept again. Oh, it doesn't sound like it is. That dummy. You think that on days this important she tried a little harder. I say that but I suddenly remember what Sayori's told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But, maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Haha. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, June. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning. You know? Oh no. I think we failed. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But, I stammer embarrassed. Did Sayo really tell her about that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan to bring it up with anyone, but... Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Oh my god, this guy has good senses. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Oh, let's see if it's the same as last time. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh shit. No, I think we failed. This is what we got last time. Oh no. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem I get a pit in my stomach. June, what's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monka calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? No, we tried so hard. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me she's not dead. I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simplest gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. Oh shit. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. Oh no, not again. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Tell me I'm wrong. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me she's safe. Sayori? Here we go. Wake up, dummy. There's no response. Here we go. I don't want to enter a room like this, but... Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. Oh, God. Please, no. I gently open the door. So Fuck. How the hell? Again? Again? Come on. We did everything right, I think. I think we did everything right. 
we made the poems for her, although we did kind of mishmash with Natsuki, but majority of it was for her. And then we didn't even touch, we didn't even bother with Yuri, and we told Sayuri we loved her. What does it take to make her survive? What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayuri wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sari I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her, I shouldn't have confessed to her. No, we... We didn't confess to her last playthrough. We did this time. We still got the same result. That's not what Sari needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just... lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I could do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers, but I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Son of a... Damn it! We got this crazy crap again. Is the problem, because when we write the poems, make them for Sayori too, we did it for both times, when we were chasing after Yuri and this playthrough. Is that the reason why Sayori keeps getting targeted? Do we have to only focus on Natsuki and Yuri to save Sayori? I'm gonna have to try that next time around, because we're not stopping until we save Sayori. Alright everyone, so if you're here for the last playthrough, you kind of know what you're getting into, but it seems like we're gonna be focusing on Natsuki for this time around. So, good god, let's do this. Okay, here's where Sayori's supposed to be, blah 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 blah. I see an annoying girl running towards me from a distance, waving her arms in air like she's totally oblivious and attention to my draw to herself. That girl is blah blah blah, my neighbor and good friends, since we were children. You know the kind of friends you've never seen yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long? We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. If she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh in front of the crosswalk and let blah 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 catch up to me. Yeah, glitch, bug, yada yada, goddamn, and reset. It's an orange school day like any other. <sighs> Mornings are usually worse being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always an anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever and is over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. June? Glitch, 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 and appears a crazy Monica. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. Oh my goodness, you totally did. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other, but we rarely talked, and we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies for, to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Haha, <laughs> about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing with the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Yeah, see? You know when I first went through here? I was terrified. Out of my mind. Now I'm still shielded from all this. But then again, we're not going after Yuri this time. It's likely going to be Natsuki, so... There might be some new things to scare the crap out of me. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, haha. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members or something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. 
but it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can mean anything, reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my memories even keeps her manga collection in the classroom. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, the member's a member, right? Did Monica say... she? Hmm... Hey, June. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh... I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could, at the very least, visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome! You're really sweet, June. You know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. Oh, God. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile, you damn fool. You damn fool. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, but generally being used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back. And I brought a guest with me. Eh? Freaking flashing. Those flashes are what gave me their jump scares. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, June. Silence. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Nuh uh. What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran to June in the classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought someone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, June? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in this club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monaco's really have worked hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down a teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I guess. Hehe, <laughs> tell yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Wait, wait. She's trying to impress us. Is she going to go obsessive crazy again? Uh-oh. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pass on for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, June, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. That's rude. See, second playthrough, and I noticed the rudeness now. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. She traces a room over teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since Simona walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't that amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Oh my god. If she means writer as in writer for this script? Yeah, definitely. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, you might as well be having a conversation with a rock. 
Haha, <laughs> I expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called, Don't Say It Out Loud, and Give That Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, yeah, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. She's very insecure because people are jerks about her style of writing. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. You have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Heh, <laughs> silence. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, silence. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on responsibility of the vice president after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now we have a new member. It seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, June? Hold on. There's still one problem. And what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and, um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. This actually has happened to me before too. So, yeah. But, I'm sorry I thought. Hmm. Eh? Yeah? The girls exchange glasses before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, June. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... Silence. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I'll feel terrible for laying everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So for writing poems, it's the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, June? Monica, stop acting so surprised. Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I'll be super pissed. June, I'm so happy. We can become an official member now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. June, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hehehe. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. Oh my god. I don't know what's different here, I can't tell. Everything feels the same, but it feels different all at the same time. I'm comparing it to the previous playthrough, by the way, since you can't all read my mind. With that, I depart the club and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. But I'd really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club. Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. Dude, you're so wrong. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Good god. We're done for. We have unlocked a special poem. Oh, this is the one that told us how we could save Sayuri. But it lied. Can you hear me? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that laugh. Freaking scared me. Maybe max my volume just for that. <laughs> Big mistake. Alright, so we got through the first part of the game and still we lost Sayuri. Even though I tried. I tried to save her. But my theory is that you actually have to pursue Natsuki and Yuri together and completely leave Sayori out, at least until the second playthrough. 
because of whichever girl you really try to go for, she'll become the target. So I think just completely ignoring Sayori will save her. For the next playthrough, we're going to try and save her. That's all I can say. So anyways everyone, thank you for watching Doki Doki Literature Club. If you enjoyed yourself here, then go ahead and click that subscribe button, as well as the notification bell to be notified of when the next video comes out. And if you have visual novels you'd like to suggest, then go ahead and leave it in the comments or discussion tab. And don't forget to share the video if you know anyone who would enjoy this. And I'll see you all in the next one.